What up, though, world? It's your boy Mo Ager. Maurice Ager. You know what? I've been doing this in the zone Wednesdays for about, uh, about 10 weeks straight now. But you know what? I think I just want to introduce myself to you guys. Gaining a lot of traction on Twitter, a lot of new followers, a lot of new people that, that don't necessarily know who I am, where I come from, what I even do. Um, well, first and foremost, from Detroit, Michigan. Born and raised, West Side, Liver Noise, between Millen and Puritan. What up, though? Started making music when I was six, seven years old. Started playing basketball when I was roughly eight years old, nine years old. But music was always my first love, by far. My mom was a singer, my dad played in the band. Mom actually turned down a deal with Motown. So music was always in my blood. Basketball was one of those things that got us out of the ghetto, out of Detroit, the Dirty D. And, uh, but I always kept music close to me. So, got into a lot of trouble when I was a kid. Fifth grade, didn't graduate from elementary school. I graduated because, <laughs> well, I didn't graduate. They passed me along to the sixth grade because, true story, there was a fire in the bathroom. This was lunchtime. A kid was playing around in a in the, uh, in the bathroom, the boys' bathroom. I, I remember it like yesterday. I go in the boys' bathroom, the, bath, the, the, the trash can is on fire. The whole trash can, fire. So the bathroom was about to be on fire along with the school. So what did I do? I ran to the cafeteria, grabbed some milk cartons, splash, splash. I just cut running, running back and forth. Milk cartons, splash, splash, splash teachers and the instructors like, yo, why is this kid running back and forth from the cafeteria to the bathroom? So I eventually put the fire out. So by the time the teachers and the principal got to the bathroom, the fire was already gone. So I saved the school. And this was a week before graduation, y'all. Mind you, I had all Fs on my poor car. So I was about to get, I was definitely about to get, uh, get held back. All my friends was going to go to the sixth grade and I was going to be in the fifth grade still. <laughs> that would have been so weak. <sighs> By the grace of God, I was able to put that fire out. And it was like, they felt sorry for me. The city actually had a party for me. They, the whole, the fire marshals, everyone, they had like a Maurice Sager day because I saved elementary school, MacArthur Elementary School. This is true facts. Look it up if you want to. So that's the reason why I made it from the fifth grade to the sixth grade. Fast forward later, I was in special education through middle school. Classroom have four or five people in it, maybe six if we were lucky english it would be like an english math class real easy but i got in so much trouble they just put me in special education it's not that i was actually mentally slow but i got in so much trouble they was like no let's put this kid in special ed so i was in special education for three or four years and at least one year in high school so basically i got kicked out of school my seventh grade year i was on half a days played very little basketball on the basketball team i was never eligible so i play in a some of the city league, which is called the SYB, Southfield Youth Basketball League. Shout out to my people who know what that is. But So I was able to play in those leagues on Saturdays. And I was one of the best players in the city, but I was never eligible to play. So heading to my ninth grade year, I actually got um, help. Well, I didn't get help back. I didn't graduate. Go figure. So I had to go to Arthur Ashe Academy in the summer just to get passed on to the ninth grade. Arthur Ashe Academy is a school for Kids who always get kicked or who are getting kicked out of classes, school, and just bad, you know, troublesome ch children. It was an alternative school, so. So I went there for the summer, passed me along to the ninth grade. So I made it to the ninth grade, played junior varsity at Southfield High School, played maybe eight to 10 minutes a game, averaged about three or four points. But I knew I was worthy of more than that. I, I felt that I wasn't getting a fair opportunity, and I still feel that way to this day when I look back at the favoritism the coaches were playing with, uh, um, I'm sorry, with a couple other guards, but regardless, they were going to put me on JV again, and I wasn't having it. I said, you know what, I'm going to transfer. Either I'm going to play varsity my sophomore year, or I'm going to transfer. So long story short, I transferred that very next year, started on varsity, led the team in scoring, led, a, led the team to the first regional championship, the year before we got there, the year before I transferred there, me and my best friend, they won maybe six games. 
the year I got there, we won 15, 16 games. The year after that, won the state championship. And the year after that, you know, the history was made. I was All-American, ended up getting recruited by some of the biggest schools in the country from Michigan, UConn, Louisville, um, Michigan State, Marquette. Went to Michigan State University. Ended up graduating from high school, passed my ACT, which is a blessing considering I didn't graduate from middle school or elementary school. So this view is wonderful. I'll get to that. I'm shooting, this is raw, by the way. You know, this is straight raw action. Just speaking to you guys from the heart. Long story short, went to Michigan State, four years, All-American. Played on the USA basketball team. But meanwhile, I'm still making music though, baby making beats every day, recording, writing, rapping. Just staying in the zone any way I could. Ended up graduating from Michigan State University. Ended up being a first round draft pick to the Dallas Mavericks. Played five years professionally. I played with the Dallas Mavericks, Minnesota Timberwolves, New Jersey Nets. Fast forward now. I do music full time. I spend time with the youth. I speak all over the world. I've dedicated my life to serve people, not just not just the youth, but young adults, anyone who needs my service. I serve through sports, music, health, technology. I crack jokes, whatever someone need at that time. Whew. And I love making music. Music is my passion, man. I put all my love and my heart and everything into my music because it's my life. Music is my life. All of my life experiences go into my music. And that's what makes me the artist I am. You know what, one, one thing I know about artists and creative people, we always love the appreciation from other people, from our art and the things that we create. We might not always get the respect we deserve at times, but for me personally, I work really hard to keep my feelings to me, meaning if it took me a week or so to work on a record, an album, whatever it may be, I keep the feelings that I had to myself because I felt so good when I was creating it. I felt so good when I was making that beat. I felt so good when I was coming up with those lyrics. I felt so good when I was mixing this record. And sometimes we give those feelings away to people on social media, blogs, or whatever it may be. We give those feelings away in hopes that the people will feel the same way that we feel about the product that we produce, if that makes any sense. Basically, all I'm trying to say is, I try to keep the same feeling that I had. You know, when, I'm, when I create an album, I have an album coming out, a short album coming out June 25th, it's called Zoning. I'm truly proud of this work. I feel great about it. I had a great time doing it. I felt like the spirit was moving through me throughout the whole process of creating the beats, coming up with the songs, the hooks, just the whole process, I enjoyed it so much. So basically I'm saying that whole process of putting together that body of work would be unfair if I gave that away in hopes that people may like it, because people may not like it. That's just a fact. People might not even take the time to download it or listen to it. People might not even listen to this video. But regardless, creators, if you're a creator, if you're an artist, you're a chef, if you feel good at what you do and what you're doing, the universe will bless you regardless of what other people may feel or how other people may accept your craft. So keep doing you and keep your feelings close. Continue to feel good. You know what, like, dang man, nobody liked my, my new dish. Nobody likes my new painting. But remember how you felt when you was creating it and that's all that matters. You'll be blessed, I promise you. I'm, I pray and I thank God every single day that my life is not resolved around how many likes I get, retweets, views, I do what I love every single day and I still reap the benefits and the blessings of what I do. And that's create music. That's be an entrepreneur, serve the youth, and just create. And always being a helping hand for people and treating people with, with love and respect. It is tough at times being a clean artist. It is, it is tough being such an honest artist in the sense that I do feel responsible for everything that I put on records. I feel deeply responsible for what I say, for the material that I put out, 
I, resp I feel responsible for three things. For one, God, two, myself, and three, my family. And make that four, the youth. It's very important that we be responsible with things that we say on these records because it can make a difference in a, in a child's life. And that's not the type of life I live. I live a clean lifestyle. I've lived a life where I drink, party, turned up, I did that. And it wasn't for me. I'm not, I'm not judging anyone that does it. It was fun. But for me, to be the person that I want to become, I have to stay on the straight path. And I enjoy it. I'm a lot more prosperous. And I love this view. You only can get that view from being focused. At least, my experiences, just being in a zone, locking in. So I'm sorry for talking you guys' heads off. This is Mari Zager, AKA Mo Ager. Stay tuned for everything. We in the zone. The Zona album comes out June 25th. Great music, honesty. It's gonna be about my progression from one place to the other from coming from Detroit to being out here in Los Angeles, California and traveling the world and being able to do everything I love to do because I made a choice. I made a choice to make a choice to be exactly who I want to be. And it started with that mind. Then it started with the heart. And then the outer circumstances began to, to present themselves. <laughs> so I hope you guys watch this whole video this is Mari Zager. Shout out to all my new supporters on Twitter. I don't even want to say followers, man. Supporters. Support me. I support you. And uh, that's it, man. Are you in the zone? That's what I'm going to ask you. Are you in the zone? And if not, why not? <laughs> happiness leads to happiness, baby. I just got done doing the L.A.'s Clippers camp for the kids. The kids were great. I have the Moager Hoop School as well. We have the In A Zone with Mo Ager campaign. We have the Mo Ager Outreach Foundation coming soon. Man, we just, it doesn't even feel like work. It just feel like daily task now, because we love it. We wake up every single day and do exactly what we, what we choose to do, man. This is my view every day, baby. And I don't say it to brag, but to motivate. Gotta be a warrior, homie Golden State. All right, man. Happiness leads to happiness. Let's go.